got a very good uh, good response and and crowd to be able to join us today. Um, I think when 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 Tom and I last spoke about um, who to expect, I think we've got a couple returning uh, participants. So I have updated the presentation. So there's some new fresh images. So for those of you uh, who uh, who took part in it the first time around and and decided that you were going to come back, uh, we're we're pleased to have you. But we, uh, we're rewarding you with some new content. Um, but for those of you who are new, uh, don't worry. We'll be uh, we'll be going through um uh, the, the full overview so you haven't missed anything by not having participated earlier uh i'm just going to share my yep. screen here perfect and we see it now okay fabulous all right so we'll we'll start off with uh with my opening slide and this is a bit of fun that i think kind of summarizes what the campaign for wool is all about um, you know, we we were created, of course, by His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales uh, back in 2010. This is our 10th uh, global anniversary, the seventh uh, since we launched in Canada, uh, and um, and so this is a photo actually taken uh, by uh, an artist, um, uh, Sage, and I can't I always butcher her last name, but uh, I can send around the link. Um, but uh, based here in Toronto, and her work is all about interacting with animals and um, sort of gaining comfort and then sort of a little bit of the unexpected. And I thought that this piece, um, when, when we first met her, uh, we thought uh, she was interested in doing some some work with sheep. Uh, so we connected her with, uh, some of you may know, Carol Precious at the Shasanyi Farm. Um, so this is some of Carol's uh, Shetland sheep. And um, Sage spent the day getting getting to know the sheep and, and building their confidence. And then adding this bit of, uh, of of sparkle and unexpected razzle dazzle and i think that's what the campaign for wool is all about is it's about educating about informing but also surprising and delighting we want to remind people of how incredible and amazing wool is and it, it's not only in terms of practicality but in in terms of beauty it is it is one of the most beautiful natural fibers it gives you um, structure and color uh, that unlike any other and so I thought this this picture is a bit of fun um, those are actually the artist's legs in the back there's no sort of uh, uh, Photoshop or anything it's uh, that that's literally her wearing um, sparkle I thought they were tights but it's actually uh, sparkle body paint and 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 shoes and sparkles because uh, I thought again that this is um, really speaks to our mission at the campaign which is you know we're all about the sheep we're all about trying to create um, a higher price point a higher demand for wool um, but we're also about a little the razzle dazzle and so I thought this picture kind of helped to, to summarize that um, so again the the campaign uh, as I said, 10 years ago that we were launched globally. It's run in 13 different countries. Um, we launched it, th this picture here is from the launch in Canada um, in 2014. Um, their Royal Highness is uh, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall uh, launched it at this event uh, in Picto, Nova Scotia uh, on, on a pier on a, a, a particularly brisk day in, in May of 2014. Uh, and we've run Canadian Wool Weeks. Um, we ran one that fall and have run one every fall uh, since since then. Um, our, we're all about bringing together all aspects of the wool value chain. So whereas many organizations will focus on one particular aspect around manufacturers or around producers, uh, we really are uh, about linking uh, everyone in the value chain from the sheep and the farmers through to the end customer, retailers, designers, and, and sort of everyone in between. Um, so as I say, we've had annual, uh, annual wool weeks since then. Um, this year, we'll, I'll, I'll get into that on one of the, the next slides, but we thought we needed a little bit more for 2020, uh, given everything that's happening. Um, but I would say that, again, a, a big part of uh, of what how, how we see our role in the landscape is to really be a voice for the wool value chain in Canada and to find opportunities to uh, to really to really show it off uh and and to show the best of what it's capable of and and that means using canadian wool as much as we can but it also means highlighting wool in general uh and and being able to show how canadian manufacturing or talent uh can transform wool regardless of where it comes from so i think again we we've been a strong voice for 
um, for the sector. And um, I think we, we pride ourselves on our ability to develop and leverage partnerships with a variety of organizations, uh, ranging from Ontario Sheep, of course, uh, to retailers like Holt Renfrew, designers like Smythe and Line, um, and, uh, and media, et cetera. Um, again, first and foremost, our role is around communication and education. Um, and so again, that's why a lot of what we do is uh, drives a, a, a public facing and uh, agenda around sharing the wonders of wool with the general public. Um, again, the reason the Prince created it was uh, back in, in 2010 was he saw a landscape where wool prices were sinking around the world. Um, but, but worse than that was um, the rise of fast fashion, an environment where uh, people weren't seeing the value in natural fiber and they weren't seeing the value in wool uh, in particular. And so uh, that has been a driving force of the campaign in all of the countries where it runs. Uh, in Canada last year, um, we had 42 million uh, media impressions with our different media projects, uh, which we're really uh, pleased by. Uh, we have an, a national and an international reach. So again, one of the reasons why a lot of our partners like to work with us is because not only will they get profile here in Canada, um, but often, but through our global web and social media channels, as well as our global media partners, uh, and gives access to, uh, as I say, a range of events and, uh, and activations in 13 different countries. And our ability to create great images that really sort of sum up, um, again, the beauty uh, and, and the natural sort of splendor of wool. Um, so this is just some of the, the media coverage that we had got from last year, some little clips from the uh, the Toronto Star piece, the Global Television piece, and the Globe and Mail uh, that we worked on. So this year, uh, again, 2020 has been a challenging year in a variety of contexts. Um, as I say, it was our 10th anniversary uh, globally. Uh, we did have to cancel a number of different things, but we have been very lucky in that the bulk of our partnerships um, have been able to continue regardless of, uh, of, of what's been happening with the world. And we attribute that to the strength of our partners uh, and, and our, our ability to, um, to deliver. Whereas even, even with some of our partners like Colt Renfrew, there were other collaborations with other organizations that they dropped. Um, we, we were very fortunate in that because we had have been working with them from the very beginning, we were able to move ahead uh, and ensure that even if we didn't have the size of the collection that we were looking for, we were still able to deliver something. And so the decision was made that because we still had so much going on, uh, we, this was too much to confine to any particular wool week and, uh, and that it is just due to the climate uh, and the, the, the political and social environment that people need wool right now. Uh, and, and so we decided to claim all of October as, as wool month uh, for, for 2020. Uh, we have three major projects, which again, uh, each represent three of the, the different areas where we um, like to be able to demonstrate wool's value. And that's in the areas of fashion, interior design, and fine art. Um, so, on, on the slide right now, you can see some of the, um, uh, whoops, sorry, oh, that's a surprise. Um, you can see some of the uh, pictures from the first two items. So on the, uh, on the left is, uh, is a, 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 an image from the collection with Holt Renfrew. This involved uh, two Canadian designers, Line and Smythe, uh, and they were working with wool from uh, British mills. So these were two heritage mills that were chosen. One, Abraham Moon, uh, located in the Midlands, has been producing, they were found actually in the year of Queen Victoria's coronation uh, in 1836. Uh, and um, the, the other, Harris Tweed, of course, have been generating fiber and, uh, and beautiful cloth in one way or another in the same way for 300 years. Um, Harris Tweed is particularly interesting because they work exclusively with the same kind of wool that we grow here in Canada. So it is sort of an inspirational example of what's possible uh, and, and being able to sustain rural livelihoods and uh, rural craft and artisanship in a part of the United Kingdom that quite frankly, although stunningly beautiful, uh, is, uh, is very economically challenged. And there's not a lot of economic opportunity, but yet they've been able to keep this, this amazing industry um, that 
preserves the production of cloth uh, that's still hand woven to this day. So, um, so for Harris Tweed, uh, all of their wool has to come from Scotland in general. It has to be woven into yarn in one of uh, three uh, mills on the Isle of uh, Harris or the Isle of Lewis, um, and uh, and then spun uh, er, woven into uh, cloth um, by an artisan on their own loom on their own time in their own craft uh, on, on the Isles of, of Harris and Lewis, which is a confusing term because the Isles of Harris and Lewis are actually one island, but uh, that's another that's another story. It's one of those uh, great tales of, of the UK where, you know, one side of an island becomes a very different place and yet they're uh, com common people, common culture. Um, so anyway, so we have uh, four beautiful pieces available now at Holt Renfrew and Holt Renfrew Ogilvy locations in Toronto, uh, Vancouver and Montreal, as well as online. And so again, a great marrying of Canadian design with beautiful British cloth. The second project uh, was an opportunity to be able to highlight the, the beauty of Canadian wool. Um, and um, so we wanted to be able to, we always try and find an opportunity for how to show off Canadian wool. And this year, um, after some chats with with our different partners, we settled on that rugs uh, would be would be a great use for them. So taking um, probably a lot of uh, a lot of your members wool uh, from Ontario, uh, if you sold it to Canadian cooperative wool growers and it found its way to Briggs and Little uh, in New Brunswick, then this is your wool. Uh, we we purchased. Uh, uh, two um, pallets worth of uh, of Canadian 100% uh, Canadian wool from Briggs and Little, uh, and then we engaged with. Um, HGTV designer Sarah Richardson, uh, who's a, also an interior designer here in Toronto, uh, and the firm Creative Matters, which is a high-end uh, Canadian carpet company that does institutional projects for clients like the Four Seasons and Holt Renfrew, um, but also big cruise ships, uh, institutional partners, and interestingly also has the contract to provide the rugs for all of the um, Canadian high commissions uh, and embassies abroad. So if any of you have visited the newly renovated Canada House in London, uh, you'll know that all of the reception rooms are themed after a different province and territory and are anchored by a beautiful hand woven or a hand woven hand knotted rug um, and those were created by creative matters but one thing that they never had as an offering in the past was Canadian wool. All of their products had always been made with either New Zealand or Nepalese wool. Um, so this is the very first time that they're working with Canadian wool. Uh, and this will actually become a business line going forward. So it's not just a one-off project. It's going to become a continuing partnership between the Campaign for Wool and Creative Matters for clients um, that are looking for a really unique product in terms of a custom designed, hand knotted, fair trade certified, uh, yeah, beautiful rug uh, made of Canadian wool grown grown on your farms. Um, and so you can see down below um, some of the different, uh, these are the samples actually, the, the main rugs are being hand knotted as we speak uh, and then will be ready to unveil uh, actually later in the month. Uh, the inspiration for the three rugs um, comes from, you'll see four there, but two of them are related, um, comes from a couple of different imagery, uh, pieces of imagery. Uh, the brightly colored one on the uh, top right hand side is um, inspired by a garden picture uh, from Hampton Court Palace. Uh, and um, one of the canceled events of 2020 was uh, the Campaign for Wool's global 10th anniversary celebration, which His Royal Highness was going to be hosting at Hampton Court. So this was sort of an homage to that. Um, and when you see the, the image, I mean, even the, um, uh, the the sample imagery that we that we had uh, developed, it, it it's going to look incredible of all the different flowers and colors. Uh, again, all all dyed uh, and and knotted by hand. Um, the second rug is uh, you can see elements in the two the two um, sort of camouflage looking rugs in the bottom right hand corner. This is going to be one long runner and was inspired by. Uh, one of the prince's favorite vistas uh, in terms of um, Scottish uh, uh, Highland um, hill country. So being able to uh, uh, sort of capture that in in a long uh, 16 foot by three foot runner. Uh, the final, um, we wanted to be able to just show Canadian wool in its pure 
um, un, undyed, unprocessed state. So this is, um, of course, it's been washed, but uh, but nothing else. So this is just the yarn uh, straight as straight as it came from Briggs and Little, uh, and then um, sort of rendered through a variety of different techniques to create that different texture pile, um, and uh, and that's inspired by macrame. Uh, and so she took uh, Sarah took that inspiration, and and that's going to be a really interesting rug. Uh, these rugs are going to be sort of their debut when they come back. Um, we're planning a photo shoot with Architectural Digest at Sarah's farm in Creemore, um, and uh, and looking to have um, three very different rooms all done in wool uh, with these rugs at their heart. So again, we're really excited by this because it's um, uh, part of the reason for it is to demonstrate that Canadian wool can compete with the very best in the world in terms of developing a product, which is very high value add. So these are, uh, they're not inexpensive rugs, um, but uh, if any of you are interested, be delighted to uh, to explore that, but there it will allow us to have um, uh, and we have an additional supply of Canadian wool to be able to create up to 10 more um, hand knotted uh, custom designed rugs uh, made to order. So I think that the, this is, is a really exciting um, opportunity and again, a, a way of demonstrating that Canadian wool, it's not just something to be sort of hidden away or um, you know sent, sent to be um, uh, used in other contexts, that this is, uh, it can stand on its own with, with the world's best. So we're very pleased about that. And as I say, that will become an on, ongoing business line. Now, the next piece is our fine art piece, and we're really excited about this. So in honor of the 10th anniversary of the campaign, um, we wanted something special. We wanted something that, that showed off um, Canadian artistic talent, but again, the versatility and the beauty of Canadian fiber. And this is what we came up with. So uh, it's a life-size um, wool bust of His Royal Highness um, by Manitoba fiber artist Rosemary Pellequin. Um, again, using a mixture of 100% Canadian wool, mostly from uh, Alberta, um, and I think with some elements from Manitoba as well. Um, this is, what, what's incredible about this piece is that it's all needle felting. So what you're seeing is literally just wool built up over layers. I think there is one sort of metal rod that, that anchors it to the base, um, but otherwise it's it's all Canadian wool. And the detail is just incredible, right down to sort of the blue of his eyes, um, the smirk of his uh, of, of his um, expression. Um, the artist has even said that uh, uh, you know she feels like she's gotten to know him uh, over the, the the many months of of putting this together. Um, so both the bust and the rugs. Uh, once we have the the shoot for Architectural Digest, which will be the the first chance for you to see them all sort of completed and in context, um, we'll be un having a public unveiling um, uh, hosted by Her Honor, the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, at Queen's Park in sort of mid uh, mid November. We're still uh, clarifying that date, but again, uh, and of course, it, normally we would like to have a large uh, reception and event, uh, invite people to attend because of COVID that's not possible, but we'll be having a small socially distanced event, being able to show off the rugs and the bust uh, in, in the beautiful setting of um, the Lieutenant Governor's suite at Queen's Park. And then we have a few other uh, museums uh, and uh, locations that we're in, in conversations with um, to uh, sort of send them to afterwards to be able to show them off in different parts of the country. Um, uh, so that, again, so uh, it, it's, uh, and we have offered the bust as a gift uh, to His Royal Highness eventually as a, in celebration of the 10th anniversary. So we're waiting to see uh, what he would like to do with that. So yeah, those those are the, the three major projects. Now, where, where are we going from here? So up until now, the Campaign for Wool um, and quite effectively has been a, um, a force for public awareness, for education, for communication. And a lot of our work has centered around, uh, again, this, uh, you know, the annual uh, Wool Week, uh, the, the different commercial and retail partnerships that go along with that. But where we're looking to grow and where we're looking to expand our role here in, in Ontario and in Canada is to really build out um, 
uh, a 21st century business case for Canadian wool and our own five-year strategic plan of how we can better leverage um, our, our links to the global industry, to the global brands and names that we have associated with us to, to benefit um, Ontario um, and Canadian wool growers. And, and so how do, we, how do we best leverage that platform? Where are the emerging opportunities where um, Canadian and Ontario wool fit uh, and, and the emerging technologies um, so that we can, we can extract more of the value here and ensure that you're paid a, a higher price so that it, we want wool uh, to be seen as a commodity in its own right again, not as a byproduct for your meat operation, uh, something that you want to take care of uh, and, and grow the best possible wool that you can um, rather than just having it as as a nuisance that that may not even cover the cost of, of, of the shearing um, so that's why we're looking to you uh, again our, our our fundamental goal is is to have people buy wool and, and to raise the price of the clip um, for those who produce it um, so we want to look to you as as the growers um, for your insight for your ideas uh, and, and for your support throughout this entire process um, and and really be able to um, you know build uh, our organization the the platform under which we, we created sort of a, a um, a Canadian nonprofit called the Canadian Wool Council, which is the vehicle through which we deliver uh, the campaign for wool here in Canada. So we want um, we want your insight as to how uh, we can best serve uh, serve your interests as wool growers uh, and, and really create a, a strong place for Canadian wool. We want to, you know, we're not going to have the same industry that we had a hundred years ago. Um, I like to bring up, and I don't know whether this was fate, but I grew up in a, a small village called Glen Williams, Ontario, uh, located just beside Georgetown. Glen Williams was built on the wool industry. Growing up, there was there was two, there are still two mills there. They haven't been operating. One uh, one closed down before I came around, uh, and the last one. Uh, surprisingly, we was open until I was about four years old. So it's not that long ago that we had that heritage. The the question is, what is the what is the 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 future of the industry here? What is the niche that we can fill? Um, because it's not going to be the same as before. Um, but but there that's not to say that there isn't a, a role for Canadian wool and there isn't an opportunity to add value to create niche products uh, that are going to um, again get you a better price, but be a, a good use of that fiber. And so whether it be uh, high fashion, whether it be high-end um, upholstery and carpets, um, or other technological aspects. One of um, one of our contacts in New Zealand, for example, they are rather fortunately working on mask technology and their fiber medium, their disposable masks that were originally developed uh, for. Um, the Asian market for polluted cities. They were primarily focused on air pollution as opposed to viruses, um, but they have the advantage of, of performing to N95 levels and filtering out bacteria and viruses. But the filter medium is made of wool. Uh, and in fact, wool that is, comes from a proprietary breed of sheep um, that, they, that they raise on, on their flock in New Zealand. And so this is, again, um, a more industrial application, but an intriguing way of how um, of how wool can be used uh, and its natural properties to be made uh, taken to the greatest advantage. Another on the end, again, we've talked a lot about high end and high value added uses. Um, there's also a lot of opportunity at the lower end, looking at uh, at insulation, um, at housing insulation, looking at packaging. Uh, again, a company that we've spoken to in Australia that does wool packaging to replace, for those of you who receive, I guess you're farmers, so you wouldn't receive HelloFresh or food boxes. Um, but if for those who have or, or have tried that out, it's a lot of wasteful packaging uh, or for people shipping um, shipping uh, perishable items like meat, cheese, which is something you may be doing in your own operation. Uh, this is a company that offers a, a wool, 100% uh, wool biodegradable solution. Uh, I think there's a thin biofilm on it that just separates the wool itself. But then again, 
it's not it's it's totally natural and will completely break break down um but it offers insulation and a performance around humidity control uh and temperature control um for for again people shipping fresh meat cheese pharmaceuticals fresh seafood uh is a huge part of the business so again these are the kinds of ideas um that that we're looking at and and where we can how we can build a 21st century uh, wool industry here in Canada. And, and that's the process that we are embarking on right now. We've been fortunate to have some private support um, to uh, embark on a strategic planning process. Um, so these sessions, like the one I did in the summer, the one that uh, we're doing now, uh, are part of that initial consultation. Uh, and then we're, we'd be delighted for anyone who will talk to us to drill down uh, more on your ideas and, and find out again what what are the opportunities that really suit the kind of wool that we produce here uh, and then what are some types of wool that we could produce here that maybe we're not where there there could be a, a lot of opportunity so um, so again looking looking to you as as the growers uh, for a lot of support in that process so I, again I you know I, I can go on about all our ideas and uh, uh, for hours but uh, we're here to listen to you um, so I want to have a discussion you know talking about uh, you, you know your thoughts your ideas your encouragements your cautions um, and uh, and and how we can really build a platform for uh, the promotion of wool and Canadian and Ontario wool uh, right here at home. So I think with that, I'll I'll take a deep breath in uh, and uh, and kick it over to Tom um, to to start that discussion. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank.